this morning's message, I want to grab you, not physically, but through the word of God and remove some things. <laughs> Philippians 4.13 says, what? I. Who? 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 I. I didn't, get, I didn't give that to them to write. It just hit me all back there. You know, God continuously ministers to us before he ministers. Anyway, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, you heard me say it. Now I want to talk to you about it. I. Who is I? I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I, me. So it has to be personal between you and Jesus. And this is the thing. God strengthens you in your weakness. That's what you're calling upon. That's what the word says. That's what we were talking about in promises. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens? There's where your strength comes from. How many of you ever felt like you just had no strength to go anymore? You know, you've been there. You, you felt like, man, I'm just so tired of this already. You're in the same routine, same rut, doing the same thing over and over and over again. You feel like you're exhausted, you know. But let me tell you something. That scripture finishes. <laughs> he will strengthen you. Which, if you go back to the beginning, you can do all things. You know, all things according to his will, not yours. How many of you sometimes you want God to do some stuff in, in for us that, that ain't in his will? You know, um, God, they, they did something to me this long time ago. If you can just put it in front of my car, I'll put it in drive. You know, no, that's not God's will. You know, but we think that way sometimes. And I want to tell you, where the natural mind will take you, God's mind will say, hold on a minute. You know, um, the title of this message is Walking in Abundance with Your Faith. Jesus told a lady who got healed, your faith has made you well. Well, let me tell you something. In order for her faith to make her well, it was because she sought after him. You see, when you seek after Jesus, things change. You know, your faith begins to grow. God wants you to unlearn limitations of what you placed on him. That's right. This morning, that's what this whole message is about. Some of us has placed, has placed limitations on God. You know, we have said, oh, I'm going to be on this depression medicine for the, for forever. And, and let me tell you something. You place a limitation on God for him feeling you emotionally. You know how depression walks in? It, it, it walks in through stress, but it has to walk in by the invited thought of overwhelmingness. You can't get through. You're not going to get by. That's how it walks in. You know, and some of us have to unlearn things that we have took on upon ourselves that God didn't give us. You know, limitations. Let me tell you what a limitation is. It's there to stop you from moving. You have a limitation. You cannot go any further than this. You know, we place limitations on God. That's where we kind of dry up spiritually. All of a sudden, we place a limitation where there's not supposed to be a limitation. Because if you go back to Philippians 4.13, I can do, which means you're going to have to do something. You know, you get folks that are sitting back and they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. God's going to do this for me. I can do all things, which means you step in to do something through Christ. You can't go through anything else. You know, let me tell you something. Some people want to go a shortcut. What are some shortcuts? I'll tell you what one shortcut is. No, I won't. I'll go back to it. Um, <laughs> You know where all of a sudden, I want this, but yet you don't want to let go of what you've placed upon yourself, what you've learned, what you've kept, what you need to release. You see, I, I'll tell you this, earlier in our ministry, I had a lot of limitations. I, I, I personally did. You know, not Pastor Joanna, she was an example of, of me letting go of those things. And all of a sudden, when they were let go, it was like I soared to a different uh, area that I had never been before. And I'll tell you this, I want you to understand something. Some people will unlock your destiny in you that you cannot. And this is the reason why some of us, when we get around folks that are not unlocking us, what will they do? Oh. They'll suppress what God has placed in you. You know, uh, uh, I, I'll never forget this. I told somebody we're going to church in, in another city uh, down in, and I, I told them, we're going to go pray for these folks, you know, and, um, you're going to go pray? You? Yeah. The suicidal one? 
the nutcase, you, you? Yeah. And it was like, oh, well, am I not supposed to? You know, all of a sudden it started hitting me like, oh, you know, and I felt that limitation come on. And that limitation said, oh, come on, I need you to go pray for somebody. Because <laughs> I was limited. You, so, you see, let me tell you something about limitation. Limitation is only where you place it. Because through Jesus, there is none. This is the reason why healings come in and take place. You know, I was 36 years old. I was diagnosed with a, a disease in my body um, involving my pancreas. And it was, I was not going to be the same. When I hit the age of 40, it was going to be a tougher life to live or I wouldn't live. It was one of those things. And I was dealing with that issue. Um, you know, when the man told me, I was already a believer. You know, when the man told me that, the doctor told me that, it was like uh, we got in the vehicle, me and Pastor Joanna, and we were quiet. You know, and I looked out the window as we were coming back from um, the, meet, the appointment and, and going through this long deal with them. And they're, they're talking to me, telling me all this stuff. And, you know, she's sitting there and they're saying, you're going to take this, 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 and this, and, and this pain medication and this. And, this. and it was like, man, you know, uh, I got to thinking about that. I uh, can't live like that. I want to live, but not like that. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes somebody would, some people may tell you something, and you think, I just don't want to live. But you got to look at things and say, I don't want to live like that. You see, that's where the change comes in. That's where you got to understand the limitation of what you place on yourself. You didn't go further past where you need to be. So as we left there, I'm looking out the window. She's driving, and I'm looking out the window. I started laughing a little bit. And she said, what are, we gonna, what, what's, what are you going to do? I said, we can go to a different doctor. <laughs> because let me tell you something. Sometimes you get so stuck. You know, you see people like that. They get told one thing, you know, and all of a sudden it's blown up out of proportion. And, and they start believing that one thing upon their life. And they place limitations on God because they believe what man says versus what God does. Right. You know, and uh, I went to another doctor and, you know, he... he Talked to me a little bit, and, you know, I had a serious issue going on. You know, basically, uh, I was told I wasn't going to live past the age of 40. Well, I'm fit to be 50. Yeah. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah. You know, and, and thank God, because let me tell you something. My faith didn't line up with what they said. That's right. Because if your faith lines up with something or somebody that's saying, no, you cannot, knowing what God does, something's wrong. You know, I said this earlier. We, we got people in our family, it may have been us, that, that folks that, you know, uh, they, they, they got a stomach ache and they, oh, I was so sick, I thought I was going to die. Oh, my head hurt so bad, I thought I was going to die. Uh, my, my knees hurt so bad, I thought I was going to die. Let me tell you something. Those thoughts and what you place upon yourself and what you speak over yourself, you'll start living into if you're not careful. Yes. Because actually, if you look at that person, Three weeks later, a month later, a year later, they're not there. The thought process. You know, in all actuality, they don't think that way. It's just a habit of saying it. That means the degree of sickness of what they felt. But in all actuality, they don't know what the taste of death feels like. How did you think that way? You know, I'm, I, I was praying this morning and the Lord was telling me, how do they think like that? I don't give them those thoughts. I thought I was going to die. I had the flu pastor and I thought I was going to die. You know, some people have had COVID and thought they were going to die. But that that's, that's a, gets more serious to a degree where all of a sudden that thought hits you. But let me tell you something. God will rescue you out of things that you need to be rescued out of. You know, and then people will say, well, what happened to those that, 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 that uh, passed away? Let me tell you something. You know, a gallon of milk, when you go to the, bar, the, the grocery store, not the department store. When you go to the grocery store, you look at it and it has an expiration date. Everybody does that. We want to see how much time we got on it. Right? You know, when Pastor Joanna would send me to go get milk, you know, one time I bought it and it was like expired. I brought it home and she looks at it. You know, it's been a long time. She looks at it. You bought this milk and it's expired. I, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't know. Well, you know, I didn't know. Now I do. Um, there was nothing wrong with the milk. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But you look at that expiration date. I'm going to tell you something. Every single one of us has an expiration date, and we don't know it. That's the reason why we need to live life to the fullest and not speak death upon ourselves. You know, Pastor, I just can't get through this. I'm, you don't know what I'm going through. Let me tell you something what depression does. Oh, it ain't even on my message. 
Let me tell you something what depression does. Depression will take you from prospering. Mm -hmm. It'll take you from an area of excitement of life, living what God has made you to be, to something of you telling God, why are you doing this to me? Why do I have to go through this? It, it, it turns you into a person that is so mad at him for something that you're supposed to get yourself out of. That's not God's design for us. Oh, I'm going to shake you this morning. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, flood this place right now. Amen. Flood the minds, flood the hearts, flood everything within them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit dwell with them yes. with power and might. Father, I pray right now that your authority move through every person right here, now. that they step into it and they know who you are. Yes. Right Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, no one here leaves here dry. Father, flood everyone's spirit that is here and that is watching with your living water. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. You know, <clears throat> understand you're a spiritual person that lives in a body that has a soul. The natural man doesn't understand the Spirit of God. The Bible says pray and worship in spirit. When you walk in spirit, it is easy to live and know that the devil is defeated and disarmed. When you walk in spirit, it's easy to know. You don't think, oh, you know, a long time ago we were, uh, a lady was ministering to us and she said, you got to watch out what you're going to do because the enemy's going to attack you. It kind of like threw me off because I was being taught to have victory in Christ and Christ alone as long as it stayed in Him. You may encounter things. You may go through things. Your things may happen, but you have victory in Him. And, and you know, when you have victory in Him, the enemy looks at you like, oh, I can't beat you because Jesus beat right. me. Yeah. You know, and let me tell you, He just didn't beat the enemy. People just think it's a game. And you can't take it as a game. You've got to take it for what it is. It is truth of the gospel. Of the king of glory. You know, it doesn't just beat Satan, what some people think. It destroys his works. You see, so all the works that the enemy tries to throw upon you, which, which you confess out. You know, the first work the enemy does is make you confess something that's ungodly. I hate you. Mm. The only person I hate is the devil himself. I don't hate a person on the planet. And it took a while to get there. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. You know, I was remembering some things that happened in my previous, you know, uh, existence. You know, and some what some people had said, done, or whatever. And, you know, I, I then it got to where, like, okay, I don't hate them, but I don't like them. You know, okay, I, 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 I don't despise them, and, and, but, but I like them. Yeah, all right, you know, and then it got to getting better and better. And then next thing you know, you see that person, and 10 years later, you go, hey, how you doing? How you been? They're looking at you like, you know, I ain't got no money. Anyway, you know. Uh, but, you know, let me tell you, when God starts shaping you and changing you, you start seeing people not as what they despised at you, but as the love of God flows through you, you start loving them too. And that's where we need to be at. You know, I have I come from a, a big family. I love my family. You know, uh, uh, it, uh, one thing that, that my parents instilled in us and as, as I was young, you know, my uh, sister is... Let me just tell you this. I'm 10 years apart from everybody else. And it's me and then the rest of them. You know, I was doing fine until the rest of them showed up. Anyway, <laughs> I love my brother and, and my sisters. And, you know, uh, but you, you begin to see things change. You know, you, you see them in their adolescence. Now they're grown up. I mean, they're well grown up. You know, but my mother would tell me, you remember this? And I have to, like, think, I wasn't with y'all. You know, they're like way younger. I was, oh, I left already, you know. And it, uh, but I look back and I think of things and I think, you know, how is it how so, so wonderful that they want to put you in that wonderful time? How many of you want to put somebody in a wonderful time in your life, not a, not a time that, that you know, you, you have a problem, a situation? We need to start developing that now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of, somebody here needs to go tell somebody they're sorry. Mm. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for saying this. I'm sorry for gossiping about you. 
you know, people think the enemy works in the great big things. No, he works in the gossip and the criticism. Did you see what she was wearing? You know, she had high heels on that were taller than her legs, you know, and, um, you know, we've seen women walking on high heels that look like stilts, but, you know, that's them. Let them. Amen. Amen. Anyway. But, you know, the criticism, you know, if you're not careful, you'll criticize yourself out of a blessing by saying you can't do something where God has called you to prosper in. You know, we all pray for prosperity, right? You know, everybody wants to have a full bank account. But this is the thing. You may be praying for it, then you get your paycheck and say, oh, that will never happen. You just nullified your prayer. <laughs> you may be praying for healing, and then you get the doctor's report and think, oh, I'm never going to get through this. You just nullified your healing. You know, I'll never forget this. I was in a hospital, um, and I felt great. I actually felt real good. But the tests and everything were coming back bad. My pancreas was jacked up. It was not doing well at all. I was supposed to be in a lot of pain. I had to tell them, don't give me no more pain medication because I knew if I was on pain medication, I wasn't going home. And I wanted to go home. And uh, anyway, I would ask the doctor every time, can I go home now? And, you know, can I go home now? Can I go home now? You know, and uh, I was losing weight and things were happening. And, you know, the outside appearance didn't look so well. The, the uh, uh, test results didn't look so well. But I felt good. And let me tell you something. Nobody could tell me, oh, you feel bad, don't you? No. I don't. You know, and it kind of baffled the nurses and stuff when they come in, you know. When people were in the hospital, and some of you may have been there, you do not rest. You, you, they waking you up every couple of hours. They're trying to check your blood pressure, your temperature. You're all, you know, I told one nurse, you were just here. You're going to check my blood pressure again? I said, it's going to rise because you keep coming in. I'm getting a little upset. That's how you're going to get it up, you know, and can't sleep. Anyway. When you walk in spirit, it's easy to live and know the devil is defeated and disarmed. Daily declare the defeat of Satan and, the de and declare Lord Jesus has victory. That's right. Yeah. <sighs> you know, I, I, we were ministering to somebody and I, I told them, if you can start declaring that daily, you, you won't look at the world attacking you. You won't look at... Uh, all this negative that's taking place. Well, don't you know, don't you turn the TV on and look what you're on? Yes, I see some things. But I declare Jesus victory. I declare him in everything that I am. And in and, and, and our house, you know, we get people that come over and they, oh, it feels so good in here. Well, yeah, 68 degrees, you know. <laughs> feels good. I like it cool in my house. But they feel something totally different, you know. And let me tell you this, it's just not our house, it's your house too. You know, when the atmosphere is changing your house, you know it. You know, how many of you ever stepped outside of your house and the humidity is so high, you know, it's muggy, it's hot, you know, and you're like, what's the atmosphere? You discern it right away through a natural sense. But let me tell you, when you just start discerning it through a spiritual sense, you know what's there. I can tell you when I walk into a house, if there was strife. I can tell you when I walk in a house, if there's a stinking demon in it. And there's sometimes I go to some places and I don't stay long. People are like, oh, he came to our house and they didn't stay. No, you just get, get over yourself. Anyway, <laughs> you know, there's some things, but you start discerning the atmosphere. Yeah. You know, you start discerning things. And your faith level will take you there because you want God to show you some things. And he'll start showing you some things. But sometimes we won't start living up to what he's showing us to step in further who he is. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. I don't know why I woke up this morning. I had a dream that I was hollering at a concert last night, praising the Lord. And I woke up this morning. I can't even hardly talk. I thought, I think I was there somewhere. You know, I, I, I think I went somewhere. <laughs> oh, this thing keeps falling. <clears throat> I want you to do something real quick. I want you to stand up. And those of you that are watching, you're on your couch, in your bed, um, wherever you're at. If you're driving, you cannot stand up. But anyway, I want you all to stand up because in order, when you stand up, you stand up. It means you're on your own two feet. And I want you to say a declaration with me as you lift your hands. Lift your hands. Mm. Say this with me. Satan, 
Satan. Your throne, Your throne is, defeated is defeated and disarmed. And, disarmed. and, Jesus, and Jesus conquered, conquered death, 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 hell, hell and, the grave. and the grave. And he is victorious, and he is victorious in, me, in me. And he lives, and he lives in, me. in me. Amen. Amen. Now you can have a seat. You're going to think, well, why did we do that for? I'm going to show you the reason why. Because when you step forward and stand up to do something, God will finish what you start to do. You see, we got a lot of starters but won't finishers because we don't step into it any further. By you standing up, you acknowledge, hey, I'm up. The upright, I'm up. You know, and to release those words out of your mouth. Nobody releases things out of their mouth unless they believe them. I'm going to get you to start believing them in the name of Jesus. It's not believing me, it's believing Him. That's right. His word is truth. You know, the enemy even knows the truth. Because it sets you free. But he tries to bring you a lie to bring you into bondage. Oh, you'll never get well. Yeah. Oh, you'll never get out of debt. Oh, that credit card you got, the interest is so high, you, you ain't ever going to get out of it. Oh, this is taking place, so you ain't ever going to... Let me tell you. Y'all you know, may think I'm a little cuckoo in the head, but um, I had to, years ago, a long time ago, I had a beer bottle, and it was full of that, that, that beverage. And uh, this has been a long, long time ago. You know, I do things a little different, but I do things what God has called me to do. I sat that bottle down in front of me, and I talked to it. I said, you will not enter me again. You all have nothing to do with. I don't have any business holding you. I don't have any business looking at you. I don't have any business purchasing you. I don't have any business taking you in my hand. And I will have nothing to do with you again. Do you hear me? I'm in my backyard, on my patio, on, on my uh, picnic table, talking to a beer bottle. <laughs> and you know what it did? He heard you. It obeyed. <laughs> me having a pancreas that gave me problems since I was 21 years old. You know what I did? I talked to it. I said, you will function normally. Now I may have a symptom every now and then because I hit the symptom so the sickness won't come. Some of you need to understand that. You start praying against that symptom and the, and the sickness won't come. Too many times we'll say, oh, I'm just so sick. Well, boom. You start living into what you confess. Oh, okay, let's move on. I've got the deer and headlights. But. Second Timothy 3.1 but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. What will come? Perilous. perilous. Go ahead. Yeah. Is that it? That's all I can do? Okay, no problem. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Some things are going to come. Yes, Don't think, oh, why is this happening to me? Why can I get along with, uh, with, with my brother or my sisters or my spouse, my, my husband, my job? Why? why? There's going to be things that are going to happen. And you're going to say, well, Pastor, why? Well, let me tell you, because Scripture says it. <laughs> Some things are going to happen in your life. This world is going to get darker. You know, we teach on Halloween during that time, and people don't understand. You know, you got churches that they do this trunk and treat and this harvest festival and all this, and you're still celebrating it. You know, people think, well, there's nothing wrong with it. Let me tell you something. When you emulate darkness, yeah, there's something wrong with it. That's right. When you emulate an identity and put an identity on a child that they have nothing to do with, yeah, there's something wrong with it. But she's a princess. <laughs> look, Pastor, there's nothing wrong with her. She's a princess. Look how pretty she looks. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Quit changing the identity of children because they grow up and not know it. Quit putting things on kids that you're saying it's okay with, and they grow up and they get darker, 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 and then they get darker. You started it. Oh, I checked, I checked off that one. Anyway, <clears throat> perilous times is a supernatural demonic influence that will take place. Darkness becomes darker. It will change weather patterns, the economy, people being deceived and departing from the faith. Walking in faith pleases God. It is the establishment of priorities. Some of you can't get your priorities right. Some of us know people who can't. So not walking in faith. It establishes priorities. Without faith, you cannot please God. Pleasing God brings priorities into place. You know, <clears throat> we uh, um, here at this church and you, we know our priorities. 
How do we know it? We woke up to it today. We had an agenda on mind. I'm getting to church. Amen. I'm going to go get fed. I'm going to go get, I'm going to go eat. And some of you don't realize it, but you're sitting at a spiritual buffet and then you can eat all you want. Amen. And that's, that's the whole thing of consuming spiritual food that will build you up in faith through Christ Jesus. You know, if, if how, how many of you, uh, let me think of a food. How many of you like sardines with mustard and a little bit of peanut butter? Oh, there we that, oh, one person. So if I was to serve that today, there'd be only one person eating it. Yep, and I know, I see y'all faces. One person be eating it. But how about if I was to serve something like a double meat cheeseburger with, with, with some cheese in it, a very slim slice of tomato, a uh, very limited amount of onion, and, and, and whatever else you want, and serve that to you. How many of you would eat that? Oh, the hands go up. See? Because let me tell you something. Natural food will gravitate. The eyes will look at it, and they'll grab it through the eyes. But spiritual food, the heart grabs, and it's absorbed in to live through. You see, if, if natural food supplies us nutrition that we grow, what do you think supernatural food does? You know, I can tell people's faith level by their peace level. Mm. Pastor, I just ain't had no rest, I ain't had no peace. I ain't. You can tell people's faith level by their peace level. Mm. I'm going to start teaching you something here. <clears throat> um, 1 Corinthians 2 4. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power and my speech was not preaching or with persuasive words I don't have to persuade you to love Jesus well you gotta get him you, you, you gotta get him saved the Bible says if you lift the name of Jesus up he draws all men unto himself That's right. That's right. That's right. see it's all about him and in ministering, if you keep Jesus out of it, there, there's some places that want to do that. They want to talk about him very limited, but they have no demonstration of the spirit and of power. And the demonstration of the spirit, you know what that happens sometimes first? As you realizing you can be free. All of a sudden you realize, I can be free from this. It hits you to where you become to understand not with persuasive words or wisdom, but it hits you and it makes you think, I can be free. That is the demonstration of the Spirit moving in. And the power is what sets you free. Amen. See, so I want you to understand that sometimes our minds get so captive to something that is so ungodly. I often see pornography in people's eyes. I'm not seeing the image, but I see the word. And I tell you this, it will dry you up quicker because the world lust has nothing to do with a godly mind. You know, people think, well, uh, I don't know, I won't step into it too much, but people think, well, I ain't hurting nobody. You just said it. You're calling yourself a nobody. And you being nobody, the enemy will take advantage of you. Because Jesus calls you somebody. That's right. Amen. Mm. Let me move on. <clears throat> Make sure your faith is in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man can be many things. It can be education. And that's good. But you cannot be found find faith in just education. Signs or doctrines of men. These things are, are there to provide worldly wisdom. Faith is not a formula. It's not enthusiasm. It is founded only in God. Without faith, you can't, faith, you can't please Him. You know, uh, we, we, uh, when counseling folks, we, we'll ask them, uh, how do you feel about this? Uh, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? Because you can see your, their faith level in each individual part of their life. And when you start connecting the pieces together, then you see where they totally stand at. Oof. 
y'all, y'all looking at me a little bit. Deer in headlights, look again. Y'all okay? You're saying, oh, that's how they do it. No, well, let me tell you. This is the reason why some of the questions are asked. But this is the thing. The enemy may ask you contrary questions. Who do you think you are? Yeah. What, what do you mean you're going to get out of debt? What do you mean tell her you're sorry? You, you need to go kick her. She's down. Kick her again. You know, that's the enemy. You know, what do you mean you're going to go apologize to him? You don't realize what he did to you? You know, let me tell you something. If you ever want to grow fast... That that hurts you, apologize to you. Somebody hurts you, go apologize to them. They're like, that, that throws the devil way off his, his, his train track. You don't know what, what, what happened. They did what? I sent them to offend them so I can keep them in a better state. And, and, and when I plant those seeds, now they're trees. And now all of a sudden they just chop down the trees and digging up the roots because they went and told them they were sorry. Oh, I don't get this. See, the enemy will never get what God's trying to do. I'll tell you this. Where light shines, darkness flees. Amen. And it's the simplicity of just a piece of light in darkness. Let me tell you, if you light a candle and this room is totally dark, you still see the candle, but you can't see anything else, right? Because there's dark places. That candle needs to grow and lighten more so everything can be seen. And this is how your faith level is activated. And some of us, our faith level is, is there. It can be seen, but it needs to grow in every area of our life. Mm. <clears throat> Um, 2 Corinthians 3, there it is. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. This is a self-examination. Whether you are in the faith, test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? What disqualifies us? This is scripture. I'm only repeating what the word says. Examine yourselves. Let me ask you this. How many of you are going to the place where God called you to go to? In the realm of the Spirit. Growing. Or has your growth stopped? It's okay if it has. Let me tell you. It's okay if you feel like, Pastor, I quit reading. I don't pray that much. You know, I don't listen to Christian music that much. And I, and I can tell you this. When you stop listening to Christian music as much as you were, music changes you. Pastor, I love the 50s. I love the 60s. I love all this love music. Well, if you love the love music, there ain't no love in your eyes. You look mad. You must be listening to something else. Because whatever music you listen to will put you in that area. Let me tell you something. You listen to godly music, it pulls you closer to God. You listen to ungodly music, it pulls you away. It's by the music. What do you think Satan did? You know, some of us like that peedy peedy stuff, you know, go to all this <laughs> dancing and all that stuff. Hey, look, everybody wants to have a good time, but have a good time in the Lord. Not something that's going to despise you, not something that's going to kill and disqualify you. Where they say, oh, I thought they were a Christian. Now all of a sudden they're popping up and down over there. Uh, they got a bottle of Jack on their table and they, they're having a good time and then... And I bet I'm a Christian. Oh, uh, hold on a minute. Let's talk about this. Examine yourselves after the words that you are in the faith. Let me tell you something. Your faith level should take you closer to God. Because it pleases Him. If you're going to step further and further away, your faith level would diminish. It's almost like a gas gauge. It may be full, and then it starts getting depleted. What happens when your car starts getting to, towards empty? You find a gas station, right? The, the terrible thing is, if you're in our household, you're in a hurry somewhere and you get in a car and it's already on empty. You're like, oh. and then you're calling, y'all didn't fill this thing up before I got, well, no, it's empty. Anyway, <laughs> test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves? Let me tell you, do you not know yourself? Some of us put ourselves in positions and areas we do not belong in. Oh. Yeah. We don't belong in. You know, I had several conversations with several people before business conversations and several things and the spirit of God visited me and he said I didn't authorize those conversations that's not anything I authorized you stick with me and I'll take you where you need to go but you're trying to follow somebody else yeah they're they're making it but you don't know behind the scenes of what they're having to go through yeah, that's right. leave them alone stay with me and I was like okay Lord I have to repent 
<clears throat> Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Let me tell you something. When Jesus is in you, you don't want to walk in a way contrary to, the, to God. That's how you know. This one beer ain't going to hurt me. Let me tell you something. I'm not here to tell you what to do in your life. You know what you need to do. But I am telling you this. Quit deceiving yourself. Right. Unless indeed you're disqualified. You know, disqualified. Some people qual disqualify themselves. Arrogance, pride, and their demeanor. Yeah. Their character. Let me tell you something. Your character tells a lot about you. The characteristics of Jesus is something that needs to be taught to the church today. Yeah. You know, you heard that. What did Jesus do? Well, let me tell you something. Yeah. Jesus didn't go and tell everybody that was going to hell. So you can't tell people that. Even when you feel like it, you want to, Pastor, you just don't. I wanted to tell, you know. Oh, you can't. He didn't come to tell them that. He came to take them out of that place. To set them free. To lead them into the kingdom of God. And when he started teaching them the kingdom was within them, you start seeing their faith start expound more. Started sending them out two by two. They came back and said, even the demons are subject to us. They said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You see, that's where true rejoicing is. And your faith level. Oh, let me just move on because I'm running out of time. Many people think they're in faith. But what is it? God has to be conscious in everything in your walk. You know, <clears throat> well, I won't say that. Um. Scripture, Luke 8. <laughs> I'll say it in a minute. But anyway, um, Luke 18, 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will, will he find faith on the earth. Y'all looking at me like, oh, what does that mean, Pastor? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Don't, don't, don't. People are not your enemy. The enemy is your enemy. Just because me and we haven't, don't get wrong. We, me and her get into a little discussion that gets a lot, that gets a little louder, and, and, and some steam comes off of her head. I've seen it. I know. Anyway. She's not the enemy. You just got involved in a deep discussion. You know, some of us have to look at that like, hey, look, I got into an argument with them. Yeah, and who won? Who won? Who's a victor in your life? You know, men always want to say, well, I did. And then he looks at the lady and, no, he ain't eating that night. She ain't cooking nothing. Let me tell you something. It ain't worth it. And I ain't saying this. You got to win on every situation, but you'll never win without Jesus. That's how you win on every situation. Everybody wants to win without him. I just got into it and I had to tell them, you ain't coming in late no more. And the people are looking at me like, I never heard that before. I have. Anyway. <laughs> Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will, will, will he readily find faith on the earth? He's got to look at your faith level. Where are you at? You see, because your faith level says how much you please God. And it's this is not what it's all about. You know, I love my wife. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love her. She's, she's been married 19 years next month. 19. You know, but I tell you this. Everything I do is, is for the Lord. And she benefits from it. Because if I love him as much as I say I love him, then I can't come pick a fight with somebody on earth. I want some of you to understand that. Some of us have people in our lives that we despise. We've got family members that when they show up, we leave. Right? Some of us need to make peace. Pastor, how come my faith level just won't move past where it's at? Because you haven't made peace in areas. When you start making peace in areas, you'll start growing your faith level. The woman who had the issue of blood who was sick. Let me tell you something. She was sick for a very long time. Jesus going through the crowd. Crowd everywhere. People couldn't. She couldn't touch him. She knew she could. But she got close to him at the most 
lowest part of Jesus, you still will be healed. Mm -hmm. Which means just call upon his name. She said, if I can just touch him. If I can, that was her faith level. If I can just touch him. You see, that's where it starts, going after him. And as she touched his him, she felt something in her. The issue she had going on dried up. You see, the issue in her dried up because she got saturated with living water. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> God bring you. God did not bring you this far to only bring you this far. Yeah. Some people think, God, what are you doing right now? How do you know your faith is working? How do you know your faith is working? Well, you know, let me tell you, that's what testimonies are all about. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. That puts many things into action. The enemy is saying, I wish she wouldn't say that. Give a testimony of where he once was, where he is now. And now it's under that blood that I can't touch. I wish she wouldn't go there, say how she got set free from her mind of depression. Now it's covered by the blood and I can't go there. Let me tell you how your faith level starts growing. It starts growing when you start going after God. you got to start going after Him. Yeah. Pastor, I just can't read. All right, listen to it. You ain't going to get me to tell you, oh, it's okay. No, it ain't okay. Listen to the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. You know, Pastor, I just can't pray. Okay? You can't pray. You just release something out of your mouth saying that you can't do. When the Lord said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, so you're not looking to be strengthened by Jesus. Is, is, is that correct? And that, no, that's not correct. Well, all right, let's get past that one. Let's move on. Pastor, I'm, I, I'm never going to get healed. Well, let me tell you this. Healing. You, you want to know something about healing? You know, there was a great man. Uh, his name was Smith Wilmsworth. <clears throat> there was another man by the name of John G. Lake. You know, they carried strong mantles of healing. You know, but one thing they didn't do, and you can read this all about them, they didn't say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I should go with her. They listened and went. They heard and did. There was no question of, oh, I don't know if I can. Smith Wigglesworth, they brought a man to him that had been dead for a couple of days. Talk, took him into the building, stood him up and punched him in the stomach and said, I speak life into you. And he plopped and people just, what are you doing? He's dead. You're punching a dead man. Got him up. He said, raise him up again. The third punch, the man breathed. And let me tell you, people, people nowadays, they would, I would never do that. Yeah, because you didn't hear from God. Jesus, a blind man, he's sitting there, spits in some mud, makes a little bit of it, goes to him and, and, and puts it on his eyes. How many of you will want mud on your eyes? You know, uh-uh, you ain't putting that on me. You can't see anyway. <laughs> How would you know what I'm putting on you? See, everybody wants to do what they want to do, but not what God says. And that's how you start growing in faith. Do what God says. You know, uh, my, my blood sugar had been raising up. Uh, you know, I had a pancreatic problem in my younger life and all this stuff. And, you know, and so, and so I started walking a whole lot and, and, and trying to get away to go walking. I felt good. felt great. Come back and check my sugar. Man, I was like, oh, I need to go walk again because this feels good. First of all, I, I'm, I'm, but you know what I was doing, you know? I'll share this with you. I put the word on and I listen to it. And I'm, I'm walking in that word. I visualize myself walking in that word, walking in it. You know, I visualize my healing. I visualize the doctor not saying, oh, what? <laughs> so, so we got to retest. Something's wrong. You know, the word wants to tell you something wrong after they told you something was, you know. But I have been doing that. And I tell Pastor John, I got to walk, you know. And the other day I took uh, my thighs. He's riding his bike. And I'm watching him. And I'm walking. I'm listening to the word. And. Next thing I know, I don't see him anywhere because I'm in the Word. <laughs> she would have never known that if I didn't say that. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm walking on the sidewalk and I'm looking. Oh, no, I just lost my son. Well, <laughs> I, <laughs> I 
I better be quiet. We're going to play the quiet game when I leave here. Anyway, <laughs> I found him. He's found. He's in the back. Anyway. <laughs> And when I found him, I said, where'd you go? He said, I went this way. Well, I went the other way, you know, in our, our walk area. And I saw him, and it was like, okay, you know. Uh, but le let me tell you this. you got to do something, but don't lose your kids. You, you mean, you, you uh, and, <laughs> so when I got to him, I started laughing because, you know, you just got to laugh at some things sometimes. You know, I knew I just had him, you know, like three minutes ago, and then he disappears. I'm thinking, did I miss the rapture? Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Scripture, and then we're going to close out. Habakkuk 2, 4, I mean 2, 2 through 4. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. You know, let me tell you the reason why some people don't move into things is they don't write nothing down. Oh, I'll go back there. <clears throat> that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries for it, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. You know, <clears throat> I wrote something down a long time ago, and I forgot the paper on my desk. Um, and I even got the year on it, 2005. I wrote down, I am well able, equipped, and anointed by King Jesus to do what God has called me to do all the days of my life. I wrote that down, and I look at it, because that's, I, I, I want to live by that. You see, when you put something down about you, it makes it about you. You can show it to somebody else, and I'm like, mm, what does that mean? But when it makes personal sense to you, you know, I, I firmly believe there's businesses here that have not been started because you didn't write the vision down. There's things that need to be unlocked in you, but you didn't write the vision down. You got a sense of it like, huh. Maybe God wants me to just write it down. I don't know how many times I would wake up at night and write something down, and in the morning I'd look at it and think, okay. And then it'll start fulfilling itself out. But you've got to start somewhere. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> uh, the just shall live by faith. There's no other option. People are looking for another option. Well, I'm Baptist. That's not an option. I'm Lutheran. I'm Catholic. I'm. Don't make yourself into a religious individual. Live by faith. That just says you're with him. Yes. You know, the establishment of churches came through division. And it's a terrible thing because in heaven we're all going to be united as one. It ain't going to be the Baptist section, the Lutheran section, the non-denominational, uh, the, the Pentecostals, the, the, the Methodists. And, oh, you want to talk to the Methodists? Over there? They do that to prison gangs. Who you click with? Oh, they over there. No, that ain't it. We're free. Right. Oh. <clears throat> the just shall live by faith. There's no other option. You have to live by faith in every aspect of your life. Work, pray, study, sleep by faith. The workmanship of his faith receives faith. Again, there is no other option. Don't look for another way. Uh, whatever the doctor says, I'm going to believe. You know, I read this story that this individual, this 60-year-old this, uh, man, went to the doctor, had some tests done. He thought he had, a, uh, you know, something wrong with him. So the doctor, um, being very busy that day, grabbed a file, and it was a man's file, and sat down and read it, he sat down with him, and he opens it up, and he's going through everything, and says, mm -hmm. he was similar to the age of the man that he's reading the file to. It wasn't his file. And the man said, oh, sir, you're HIV positive. And he said, I'm HIV positive. He says, yes, you're, you're HIV positive and you're in a uh, degenerated state right now. And the man's like staring at him. He said, I've been married for 40 years. That means my wife is too. And he says, well, man, get her in here, get checked, you know, and all this. And the whole conversation, this man's crying already. And he says, okay, Tom. He says, no, no, my name's Jim. Your name's not Tom Norris? No. I'm Jim Smith. Oh, this is the wrong file. 
You know, let me tell you where it took that man to. Thinking. You know how many times that happens? People get to believe in something that's not theirs. The enemy does it all day long. It's not yours. I want you to awake to something new today. Know that the kingdom of God dwells within you. It is for you. You know, and this is the other thing. What have you imparted to others? What are others seeing in you? Are they seeing a person who's too prideful? They open tell them hello? You know, we get some people that are Holy Ghost people, but they're so up here that I ain't got time for them. You know, I'm too holy. <laughs> they just, you know, and good morning. We've seen people like that, you know. Hey, how, how are you doing this morning? Passing by you, and they're like, you know, you, you, ain't, I, you, didn't, you ain't Jesus, you know. <laughs> Thank you, somebody you ain't. Anyway, <laughs> I want to close out this service, and I want you to know this. Your level of faith will depict where you're at in life. Your level of faith will say a lot about you. Your level of faith will let you know what your tomorrow looks like. Your level of faith will keep you alive. Or what is your faith that made you well? Or your level of faith won't because, oh, you of little faith. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Dive into the Word of God. Get in contact with somebody. And, and you here, get in contact with somebody whose faith level has been down. Tell them, hey, look, the worst thing you can tell somebody, and I want to get this clear, is that you come and tell somebody when they're going through something, oh, you have no faith. You run that person completely off. Because the Bible says everybody has been given a measure of faith. Amen. Don't let somebody come and tell you, you ain't got none, because that's the enemy. Amen. They're so religious. Remember I was talking about these high and mighty people? <laughs> oh, you just ain't got no faith. You keep stepping. I'll find somebody that will help me get through this. What long suffering is about. They're going to get through it with me. My faith level may be low, but I'm going to get with somebody who's going to say, hey, look, let's build this up. Let's pray right now. Let's stop. You know, we get stopped in stores and stuff like that. Hey, Pastor. Hey, I need for you to pray for me. Okay, come here. Right now? Yes. <laughs> We're in H-E-B. <laughs> right now, right here. You know, potatoes and onions are right there. We're going to pray. You know, I'll let you go as soon as we get done. You know, that's the thing. We live in a mentality of, oh, I want this. I want I want to get. But right now? <laughs> Why don't you stand with me? <clears throat> don't get distance from God. Or don't get distant from God. And some of you are saying, well, Pastor, I know that ain't me. Well, good. Thank God it's not you. But you may know somebody who's grown distance to God. Get them back into the realm of God where he's at. And how you do that is just simply say, hey, let's go. You know, when Pastor Joanna says, hey, let's go out to eat for supper, you don't see me say, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Shoot, I'm getting dressed. I, I'm, I don't care where we go sometimes. I just, you just get to, you know, you go. And let me tell you, sometimes we just got to get up and go. Go with God. Go with the Lord. Go with what he's called you to do. Because he will direct your path if you let him. Amen. 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 You know, I don't like to end a service without people submitting and giving their lives to the Lord. And, you know, you may say, hey, I've done that already. I'm good. Well, that's good. You're good. But to repeat it is never bad. You can never say, I've got, I've got enough of God already, I'm done, because that's what you're actually saying if you say you're good. So why don't you repeat this after me, those of you that are watching. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is acknowledge God for who He is. God. Amen? Amen. Father, God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Forgive, me of forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. I, am a sinner. I repent right now. Of everything, of everything that I've done that is contrary to you. That is contrary to you. Father, God, Father God, I am seated in heavenly places because I'm, I'm forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, 
to. I will rise up, I will rise up to, do to do what you've called me to do. Me to do. I'm tired of sitting down. Send me, Lord. Here I am. Send me to my family. Send me to my friends. Send me to those who are hurting. In the name of Jesus, here I am. Amen. I believe you prayed that prayer. You're going to go somewhere now. Amen. Thank y'all. We love y'all.